is Jessica from Peace Love Books and Shame here with the second half of my March wrap up. I thought I had a horribly slow reading month for the month of March. I ended up finishing 20 books. I read nine books the first half, which I will link my wrap up down below for that. And I actually read 11 for the second half of the month, which I am super impressed by because I got so sick at the end of the month that I did not read a single book for the past four days of the month and I'm normally like on a weekend I'm getting through like three or four books because I have my audiobook and I'm usually having a lot more time to physically read. I read nothing. I literally thought I was dying. I sat on the couch on Saturday, did nothing. I did, I don't even remember the last time I did literally nothing. I didn't read. I, I'm, I spent 10 minutes on a graphic that I messed up anyways and had to redo on Monday and I watched two episodes of a show and the rest of the time I just sat there staring into space because I was so sick. I had a fever. It was not a fun time and I finally feel better. I just have a lingering cough and oh I got my nails done and I'm obsessed with the pink color that they are but I am here to finally be a normal video because the last two videos I filmed I was a little stuffy and I could not breathe but I have 11 books to share with you and I only had two five-star reads this month. I feel like I am just burnt out on cute contemporary romances and I need something more. And uh, I'm even reading a Lauren Asher right now that I know so many people loved and I'm like, it's fine. I'm listening to an audio. And so I feel like I need to pick up a different genre. I feel like I should be doing some fantasy, but I also have so many arcs I need to get to that are just contemporary romances. So uh, I'm having an existential crisis with my reading. I don't know what I want, but I was pleasantly surprised by my two five-star reads. So so the first book I have to share with you is a five-star read, and that is The Search by Nora Roberts. This is my Patreon pick for this month for our Nora Roberts read-along. With my Patreon, we're reading one Nora book a month because I love romantic suspense now, and I just want to read so much more, though I did DNF one that I didn't put on this list because I did get halfway through, but it was like a seven-hour audiobook, so I really only listened to it a little over an hour of my listening at three times speed, and I wasn't a fan. It was the new Susan Stoker, but I need better romantic suspense because that was what I was such in the mood for. This one is a romantic suspense where the heroine, oh my gosh, it's so dramatic and I was so into it. So she was engaged to a police officer and she was actually the victim of a serial killer. I think she was like the 13th person or something and she survived and she got away. And then a year later that serial killer was not caught. I think it was about a year. I don't remember. Some time passed. He didn't get caught and the only way he got caught was because he went after her fiance and killed her fiance and his police dog and so she feels like the only way and then he got caught and he's in jail so the only way she feels like protected is she now trains search and rescue dogs and the hero is someone who has a new puppy who's like a terror he calls him jaws and he comes to her because they live on an island and he's like can you train my dog i will literally pay you a million dollars to train my dog not realistically but she agrees to help him train his dog so now he's around a lot he is a like carpenter and makes furniture and it's really cool furniture and he'll like pick out trees and like make the furniture out of it and so he's really talented and they live on this island and now there are women showing up dead the same way her serial killer was killing people but he's still in prison so they're like do they have the wrong guy is it a copycat we know who it is from the beginning though which made this so intriguing and she's falling for the guy who she's helping train the dog for and you just have this lingering suspense with the serial killer getting closer and the FBI is around now because they were heavily involved with her case before and trying to figure out like what's happening and then the dog searches there's like a couple thrown in here that aren't related to like the suspense but they're just to show like her job and they're so cool and I was obsessed with this book. I loved every second of it. I could not stop reading it. Five stars. Favorite Nora Roberts book now if you want one. And I just love dogs and there were so many dogs in here. So, so good. Okay, so I will actually go ahead and review these two back to back because I was really excited. I was fully ready to this be my new obsession. And I gave them both three and a half stars. And honestly, probably... Probably like after, now that it's been like a couple weeks since I've read them, probably a three because they were just like not my thing. And I don't know if it's just this author's not my thing because I really didn't like the first book of a different series she wrote and that is... Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. I gave book two a shot because this one I know what people are obsessed with. So this one, our heroine, I just feel like she is someone who is not very smart. She doesn't think things through. She just like kind of is thrown into situations as like very helpless. Like life is happening to me. 
I'm not taking charge of any situation. So the beginning starts where she's in love with this guy and he ends up being like engaged to her stepsister and she's like, there's no way he'd voluntarily do it. Like something is wrong. Please stop the wedding. So she ends up seeing Jax, who is our like romantic lead that everyone's obsessed with, like in the book community. And I don't, I don't get it. Like I wasn't like swooning over him like everyone else, which just made me really sad because I was fully prepared to like swoon over this hero. And like immediately in the beginning, she's like, he's like, fine. They like make a deal. And then he turns everybody in the wedding into stone. And then she gets mad. So she's like, I'm going to drink this too. And I'm going to be stone. Where do, where do you think this is going? Like, what do you think is going to happen once you turn into stone? And so then, like, she's stone for, like, two weeks, and then someone frees her, and then she gets married to someone, and then it's just, like, all these things are happening to her. She's trusting so many people she should not be trusting, including the stepsister of hers that, like, literally stole her crush, who apparently liked her back, and then trusting someone... She shouldn't be, she just trusted so many people she shouldn't be trusting. So this one, I'm just like, what the heck? And then I don't know, I don't know what happened at the end of this. I meant to go back in this book because I swear it ended. And then I was like, did it not actually end? And people say there's an alternate ending for book three. Okay, so I'm listening, I listen to these audiobooks. I got to the end and then all of a sudden this thing happened and then, and then other things started happening. And I was, can someone explain this to me? I was very confused. I was, I felt like I literally thought I skipped part of the audiobook and then had to go back. And then like something different happened at the end. And I was, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened at the end because it ended and then a different ending happens. And I don't, I was like, did I, I literally like tried to rewind the audiobook and be like, did I like skip something or re like go back, but then like listen to it wrong. I, it was very trippy when I was listening to this, but this one was book two. It picked up where book one left off and this one's supposed to be like more romantic with the hero, but like still just like really random things were happening and I don't understand the hero and I was like trying to figure out this ending so it led me to Reddit and then all these people were like all these theories for the next book. I don't have any theories for the next book. I was like it was fine. I probably actually liked book one better than book two honestly with how things went. Because I just don't understand the hero either. And, like, the romance is fine. But, like, I also have a hard time swooning over a romance that's YA. And this just felt so YA. Like, Powerless by Lauren Roberts is YA. But that feels very new adult. And, like, older characters. And, like, I really like that. And even, like, Fourth Wing. But this one, it just felt, like, very YA. Because of the heroine and how naive she was. So not impressed by these. I did listen to the audiobooks. Like I said, the ending, I have no idea. No idea what the heck was happening. Um, so three stars for both of these. I will not be reading the th third book. I'm like not invested enough to want to, and I'm going to unhaul my hardbacks of these. I don't remember if I, any of these, and no, I did not end up getting any of the special editions of these, but I'm glad I didn't. It's just, I'm a little disappointed. I think I hyped it up too much in my head. Okay, sorry if the angle changed. I've tried to do it like what it was before, but I don't remember. My SD card got full and I completely forgot I had to clear it out. But um, the next book I read was for Historical Hellions. So I was out of town the last weekend of the month. So we did this pretty early. So we read Tempt Me With Kisses by Phoebe Kahn. And I was really excited actually for this, but I never, I didn't finish it. I literally, I think I had 40 pages left. I could have cared less about this plot. I gave it two stars. We started doing our reviews on our Instagram, which is great. Christy from Christy Reads A Lot has taken over the Instagram account and I love her for it. And she's just doing so much fun things with it. I liked the beginning. So the beginning, the heroine like sees the hero and she, they live in California and she's from Boston. And I think she's living in California with relatives right now. She sees the hero and she's like, I want him. And she goes after him. And I'm like, yes, I love a historical heroine with agency. Like, give it to me. I love it. They end up sleeping together and having this like kind of affair. And she really wants to marry him and he doesn't want to, but then she gets pregnant. And then she feels like he's only wants her because she's pregnant. And then there's like drama with land. And when I tell you when historical romances go off about like some sort of historical aspect and it takes over 90% of the plot, I get 
get so bored. We read one about like oil rigging and I'm just like, I don't care. I don't care about your land. It's not even yours to begin with because they're in California in like the 1800s. Like you stole that land and then they're like, people are trying to steal their land. So then they have these like vigilante people who are trying to steal their land. So there's all that drama there. I guess at the beginning was entertaining enough that I was like actually excited we were gonna have a good romance because we haven't had a good one in like three months. No, skip this one. Do not read it. I'm very sad. And there was no pirating. He had a ship and she like imagined him being a pirate. They spent maybe five pages on a ship this entire book. Why do we have a ship on the front with a pirate like hero? I feel like it was very mismarketed by that cover. So two stars, not a fan. A rough reading month. Then I was like, it's okay. I'm gonna do a vlog where I had Instagram pick my TBR. The first half was in my last wrap up and this was the last book I read for that vlog and it, I think, unless the next one was too, I don't remember. And it was Psycho Fae by Jasmine Mass. I had so much fun reading the first book. It is a, why choose like Omegaverse? She is uh, apparently this long lost like beta, I think. I don't remember the terminology, but like she goes to the lake and she's actually this beta and they never have any female beta. So then they take her, there's all these alphas there and they're like trained warriors, but they hate her. And now we figure out like the true identity of someone in book one and then they all have to go to this like evil ladies land. And it's so random because because most of this book is them entering this like tournament for like the ladies entertainment and that's all it is they just like fight in this tournament the whole time and she has no idea how to fight but she sometimes has this like inner beast that comes out that helps her fight and she's like really liking the guys but not because two of them are actually not on their side and it's just like I don't know what this book was trying to do. It just feels like there's no direction in the plot and it's just like, we're just gonna follow them around doing whatever. So there's no world building and I'm still super confused about the whole world. Like the first book was such a good start cause she was being involved in this world and she was training to be with them. But then once we like left that place, now I'm like, I don't know where this book is going and I don't know what the point, like there was no point to anything. I was like, why are you still trying to fight in these tournaments right now? I'm very confused. So I gave this one three stars. I was so sad because like the romance was getting so good at the end of the first one where she finally hooked up with one of them and then two of them are to two of the guys are together. And I thought we'd have like a lot more development of the romance, but like we didn't really. And she is very over the top, like mouthy and talking back and being very crass and like talking like a teenager if that makes sense. And so that did pull me out and it wasn't as like fun as the first book. I was like, this is kind of getting old fast. So I don't know if I'll continue the series. Let me know if it gets better because I know it's a long series and I was excited for like a fun paranormal Y2 series, but I'm just in a weird mood. I'm in a weird reading mood. This didn't hit the spot. Then I read Wild River by Laura Pavlov and I had really high expectations because I loved After the Storm and I loved loving Romeo. I listened to this in audiobook and this one I'm giving a four, more like three and a half, but I did put it four on Goodreads. This one just, I know one of the tropes is why I didn't like it and it's like enemies with benefits where they're hooking up and refusing to believe that they actually like each other. So this one's a hate to love. He's a lawyer and she is back home to take care of her dad. And immediately she like doesn't trust him because of things happening with her dad and she's used to taking care of her family. So she goes out of her way to take care of her brothers even though they don't really like help her or like like her or appreciate what she's doing. And so one of them can't hold on a job. So then she's like trying to get people to give him a job and just trying to figure out uh, like things in town and it's their romance and it was it was cute like I really love this world and I really think I gave it four stars because of the found family aspect like the side characters make this series and they made this book I loved beefcake this little kid that is one of their sons and it's just like a group of friends so they all get along so well and I love seeing all of them and I just love the dynamic of the town so much and like the atmosphere of the town is so great this one just like the chemistry between the romance and the couple was not my favorite but the rest of the book was amazing so that's why it's three and a half but I rounded it up to four because the rest of the book was so good I really love the characters I really love the town and I really love the setting of the book so I know this is not a lot of people's favorite and it's getting like three stars from a lot of my friends too so Sadly, I didn't love it as much as Loving Romeo, and I wanted a little bit more from it, but overall, still a really solid small town romance in the series, just not my favorite. So three and a half stars for this one. Then I was like, I need something I'm going to love. Like, I'm tired of reading books that are just, like, good, 
and I do like them and I would recommend them, but I'm not obsessed with them. So I was like, Elizabeth O'Rourke, she is going to be it for me because I read Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea, I think that's what it's called, Obsessed. I loved it last month. So I was like, let me start at the beginning of the series. So I read A Deal with the Devil. I gave it three stars. This was not angsty, and I don't know, I don't know. It's just like, he's a billionaire, really rich, and she's his assistant, and I just like, there was not a lot of tension between them other than just like he was a spoiled billionaire and she had to do things for him and that's literally all I remember from this plot because I was bored reading it and I'm so sad to say that because I love Elizabeth Rourke so much and her books usually hit so hard for me. There are so many of her books I give five stars but this one I just didn't care about the dynamic between the characters and there wasn't a lot of angst for me. Like it's a workplace romance. Like I don't feel like there's any boss employee romances that give me so much angst and so like the setting just wasn't the vibe for me and the dynamic wasn't and I just never fell in love with the story and I ended up finishing the audiobook very sad and it was just it was okay then I read Unwanted by Marley Valentine I listened to this on audio and I was very excited because I was like again I was like give me the emotion and angst this one I gave three and a half stars so this one is an mm romance and it is about a former drug addict and the other hero has not been back in town but he is back in town because i do know that my problem with this one was that it's very short it was like a six hour audiobook and i definitely think they got back together way too quickly but, oh that's right okay so one of their foster siblings it takes place with a bunch of foster siblings one of their foster siblings is now deaf because of a i think it was a football injury and i believe he has the next book but one of them owns a gym now because he is helping like recovering addicts as well at his gym and the other one had moved away and now he's back hasn't seen them in four years and he was madly in love with his other guy but he was an addict and that really ripped them apart and so then he left and hasn't been back and so he's there because the other like foster sibling was in an accident and is deaf now and so they have to confront each other and it's just them kind of like hanging out and then falling back in love and I feel like there was not a lot to this outside of the the romance and I would have liked a little bit more focus on the plot and it just is them trying to grapple with how to fall in love again and trust each other again after there was so much betrayal because of his addiction previously and I think they just got back together a little too quickly for my taste and it just felt like more needed to be added to this book so I gave it three and a half stars like it was still good it was still definitely emotional but like nothing I was super obsessed with like some of this author's other books like what we broke was so good and so angsty and emotional and this this one was like emotional but I would have liked a little bit more from the plot so three and a half stars for this one it was good I don't know if I'll run it down to a three because the plot I just was kind of forgettable and I wanted more and it was all right then I read Check and Mate by Ellie Hazelwood I was like I am just going to try this because I'm desperate at this point I loved this I gave this five stars I loved everything about it I loved the whole atmosphere of chess playing I loved her not wanting to play chess because her father had died and he was a really famous chess player and there's like family drama involved with him and when she played chess and she hasn't played chess in a long time and then she accidentally beats like the best chess player ever and then I I don't remember when the time jump happened but we jump from when she's 16 to when she's 18 and she is not going to college because she has to take care of her sisters because her mom has a I think she has a chronic illness where she just like can't get out of bed to work and she can't really help a ton with the daughter so she takes on a lot of that to help with her sisters including like trying to work to take care of her sisters but then something happens at her job where she gets fired so now she has to play chess because someone's like if you train with me I'll give you money and like enter you into competitions like we can make this whole big thing so she finally agrees and the hero is so intrigued by her and I loved him I love a stoic hero who's also like very good at like whatever he does whether it's like sports or something and he's just like a master chess player and I don't know why that was so attractive to me and he really likes her and then they play and I love it when they play against each other in their sport which very rarely happens in sports romances unless it's a like mm or ff romance but chess she's playing and this had so much commentary like Allie Hazelwood's books do about a woman in a male-dominated field and I love how this explored that I love 
loved her sisters. This was such a funny romance too. Everything I could have wanted in a romance at the time I got with this and I gave it five stars. I was obsessed. I loved their story so much and she traveled to different tournaments and dealt with like different people and just like her confidence and like how much of a mind game being an athlete is too. So just like trusting in yourself and being able to perform how you know how you can perform. I loved this so much. Five stars. And I was like, why do I want to play chess now? Not really, but like chess is cool. I loved it. Then I read the ebook of Catching Feelings by Maren Moore, and this one I gave three and a half stars. This one is a baseball romance, though there's not a lot of baseball, so don't get too excited about that. This one, the hero's a catcher, and him and the heroine have a really hot one-night stand in the prologue. And the heroine's adamant that she hates him, and he's just this very happy-go-lucky guy. He's very rich, and he really likes her, and they hook up, and then she's like, never again. And so she's like, determined to never be around him, like him, anything like that. But she has her mom mom, her dad had died in a car accident, so her mom cannot drive anywhere, so her mom never leaves her house. She can't hold down a job, and so her mom's about to be evicted, so she has to give all of her money she has to her mom, and so she's like, I can't afford the dorms, and the hero overhears something about her talking about it at a party, and he's like, I literally have a house to myself because my parents pay for it. He's super rich, like I said. He's like, stay in one of my guest rooms, and she's like, no, but he is so adamant because he's such a good guy. He is so head over heels for her, so in love with her, and he's just like, I just really want to help, and so she finally lets him help and then it's just like your run-of-the-mill really cute new adult romance it didn't really give me anything extra that I really wanted and it was a lot of her not trusting him and trying to push him away and he was just like smitten with her and just like really wanted it to work between them and like I said it was really cute it was just a cute romance she did have a different jersey on that she wore to his game and he's all like you don't wear someone else's jersey and then they start hooking up again and again it's just like that trope that's not my absolute favorite of hate to benefits to lovers because then it's like oh I can never trust you kind of thing and I'm just like I would like a little bit of a difference in my romance so and then there's just like a lot of random things that they did together and it was fine it was cute three and a half stars I think I did round up to four on Goodreads as well for this one because like it wasn't a bad book it just wasn't anything special like blow my socks off so three and a half four star romance two more left then oh I already talked about the Stephanie Garber so the last one I listened to in the month which is Mafia Madman by Mila Finelli I gave some four stars this one was one of the ones I enjoyed more of the month because this is a captor captive mafia romance and I just feel like I need to go back to my roots dark romance mafia romance this one the hero is like 12 or 13 years older than her or 15 years older I don't remember he's like a mafia boss right she is the daughter of I don't remember if her dad's in the mafia but her sister's married to another mafia boss he's from books one and two and so she is in Europe working for a fashion designer and no one knows who she is and the hero is actually a like investor in the designer so he's at the show he instantly recognizes her but he's instantly also like oh my god she's hot and I want her so he kidnaps her and a lot of this book takes place on a yacht <laughs> like that's like the main it's very like enclosed I would have loved for them to go a little bit out more often and that's why this didn't get like a complete five-star read for me but she ends up being kidnapped and then they fall in love they have a lot of sex and then her sister tries to find her so then they have to protect her sister and then like more mafia stuff happens at the end so I had a lot of fun I had a lot of ingredients I love in a mafia romance with we have the age gap the hate to love like opposite sides of the mafia and she actually had seen him when he was kidnapped by her sister's husband and so he's mad and remembers that so he kind of wants revenge but like not really because he really likes her and it was a lot of fun I just really had a lot of fun he has a single dad too we didn't see like a ton of his kids until the end but it was fun watching the heroine like really fall for him and like hating herself for falling for him so four stars I'm excited to continue on in the series my library has the audiobooks so I will be going through audio for this one and that is the rest of my March wrap-up the month of March I had two five-star reads which is so sad I need to like just finally sit down and read like the boys atonement series I need to finish Magnolia I was like do I have to go back to the addicted series just to like feel something out of these romances it's just been a hard reading month for me and I need to find what it is I'm looking for and I just don't know what that is yet so if you have any recommendations you're like you are for sure getting this five stars read it let me know but those are all the books that I've read in the second half of March let me know what you've read I would love to hear and that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye